1900, there were some half dozen major wheel makers who turned out more than 500,000 wheels per year for a young nation more mobile than any the world had yet seen. One of those companies began in 1867 to join with others in providing wheels for everything from coal wagons to omnibuses, from elegant Surreys, Victorias, and Bromes to the lumbering prairie schooners that cut wheel ruts all the way to the Pacific. Today, this company is the only one of the major wheel manufacturers still in existence. Hoops, Brother, and Darlington of Westchester, Pennsylvania. This factory is neither a reconstruction nor a restoration, but a rare surviving relic of a major 19th century industry. It still is making wheels, much the same way as it did in 1900, although, not surprisingly, its output now is less than one-tenth of its production in that year. About 12,000 wheels are produced each year by Hoops, Brother, and Darlington, six months behind in their orders. Their customers range from manufacturers of street-cleaning push wagons to movie production companies. And the local Amish and Mennonite population still insist that the wooden wheel is the best way to get around. But the great bulk of their product is for decorative purposes. Hoops, no doubt, could sell twice as many as they now make except for one major problem, the lack of skilled hands. In his heyday, Hoops employed more than 175 men. Today, there are fewer than 20. And when these men die, so too will die one of the prime skills that contributed to the rapid development of the United States. We are fortunate to be able to see the last vestige of these men and their machines before they exist no more. Throughout the world, almost every kind of native wood has been used to make wheels. But in America, there was hickory, a wood so strong and pliable that a lighter product of equal strength could be made, an important consideration in transportation. Today, as when the company began, logs are taken from local sources. When Hoops was at its height, the railroad brought lumber from the great forests of the south and west to supply the need. Today, the company does not require a full-time sawyer. The part-time sawyer is a janitor at a local college. The wheel manufacturing process begins with the sawing of the rough logs into slabs, which are later sawn into smaller elements. The first boards cut are called flitches. These are then cut into two-inch squares, from which will be formed the spokes and rim sections of the wheels. The rim sections are called fellows in the industry. This worker is marking the first fellow prior to attaching it to the spokes. Beside these two parts, the wheel also includes a hub, and inside the hub, the bearing. And finally, when all the fellows are on, the wheel will receive an outer wearing tread, or tire. In order to make the fellows semicircular, they must be steamed to make them pliable enough to bend. This is done in a steam vessel or autoclave where the squares remain for several hours. The next process must be done quickly before the heat and moisture escapes from the wood. Hoops has two wood bending machines. This one, used in making small wheels, probably was built in their own shops. It's unusual in that a man must apply upward pressure to the bed of the machine to keep the squares pressed tightly against the form, preventing splintering. Four or five fellows are bent at once, and their ends tied. They are then sent to the drying room, from which they will emerge permanently bent.
A more common type of bending machine was the commercial wing type, in which the bed itself raised up to bend the wood around the form. This machine also was called upon to produce bent wood chairs, sleigh runners, and plow handles. When the fellows have spent some 72 hours in the drying room, they're dressed to the proper thickness and beveled so that the inside edge is narrower than the edge that will face the ground. The fellow is then sanded, making it ready to be placed on the wheel when that time comes. Unlike the earlier wheelwrights who single-handedly crafted their products from the start to finish, Hoops employed a mass production system with over 200 men in which each performed a specialized task. Spokes begin as the fellows do, but they are sent to the drying room directly after sawing and are then turned on irregularly turning lathes. This one was designed and built by hoops. What emerges from the lathe is a rough surfaced spoke, elliptical in cross section, left square on one end. That square end will be the part facing the center of the wheel, fixed to the hub, but only after it's further machined into a rectangular tongue or tenon that will be driven into the hub. Finally, the spoke is sanded or polished. 